All right, good afternoon. Um, just one update, uh, one change on the injury report is uh, John Feliciano will not practice today. Uh, he's got a little bit of a shoulder he's dealing with from practice the other night. Um, other than that, everyone's progressing, and uh, we hope moving in the right direction. So with that, we'll open it up to your questions. Yeah, uh, Spencer will not go today. Micah Hyde will be limited, um, so you'll see him out there a little bit. Did Spencer just react to something, I guess, last Thursday? Yeah, he's just been working through it. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll see. We'll get a better feel maybe a little bit later on here. Coach, it's impressive as John Brown's been on the field for the first week plus of camp. Can you just kind of share with us some of his maybe leadership that he's exhibited in that room? I mean, Robert is talking glowingly about him the other day after practice because we don't really see that maybe as much as you do. Yeah, I mean, he's been on a couple different teams. He's, he's, he has a ton of experience, um, played in some big games with Arizona in particular and, and last year with Baltimore. Um, so um, I think that, that gets overlooked a little bit. And just because he is a little bit of a softer spoken um, guy, that uh, what he brings to the table is certainly valuable to us, the experience he brings how you deal with getting the ball and not getting the ball. I mean, he's been through all of that uh, over the course of his career. So it's all great experience for our wide receiving court. Do you think it was, I mean, it's not always easy to be a new guy, even if you are a veteran, but do you feel like he's kind of assimilated himself pretty quickly where he's comfortable in that, in those shoes as a leader yeah, in that you know, room? Or? Yeah, he has. Um, you know, you just, you watch the way he works. Um, he works at it. I, I think there's, um, he has a tremendous amount of strengths, things in his toolbox that he can use, and, and the things that aren't his strengths, he works at. And that's, you see that, uh, that work ethic on a daily basis. And so um, that, set, that speaks to who he is as a person, his character, and I think that's a great example to, our, to the rest of the team, really. Hey, Sean, how challenging has it been at tight end? You've got the three guys that are hurt, and then the, guys, the five guys that are out there, four of them are young. Um, kind of new to all this. How, how challenging has that been in that position? Yeah, I really like what I saw the other night from uh, from that group, the guys that were on the field. Um, I was impressed by the way they handled themselves. You know, really, other than Lee, um, who has experience, the rest of the guys that have been out there for us don't have um, much experience, if, if, if any. And so uh, watching those guys, the way they handled it, the way they handled the run game, the pass game, you saw Tommy make – uh, the, the play, uh, what was a simulated four-minute drive, and, and then you saw Nate with the catch in the back of the end zone. So I was very pleased with the way they played the other night. Sean, we have a preseason game obviously coming up next. How has your philosophy changed, if at all, throughout the years about the first preseason game and kind of you know understanding what you want to get out of it, going back to even when your coordinator days till now? Yeah, you know, every, every year is similar in that regard to what you want to get established in terms of the stepping stones, um, and kind of a crawl before you can walk type of mentality. Uh, that said, every team is different in terms of um, maybe how far along we are with one phase of the ball versus the other, and, and then because of that, what we want to see, or, or sometimes it's affected by who's healthy and, and then what we want to establish uh, on that side of the ball. So there are some variables, but that said, it's, it's uh, let's come out and let's play good. Um, good solid football and, and uh, show some good fundamentals. Sean, how would you gauge Ed Oliver's trajectory since he first got in here and where he's at? Has it been mostly constant on, on, on the up and going up end? Yeah, I would say, I mean, you know, he's working hard. I think having Kyle here certainly helped. Uh, it could only have helped, and, and I re really appreciate the way he took to Kyle. And, and, um, and so, um, you know, I think what we're seeing is a player, a young player that um, has some good plays and some plays he wants back, uh, but he continues to learn from those plays and those experiences, which is what we want. John, what, is, uh, what have your impressions been of uh, Mike Love? And even going back to off season, um, it just seems like a guy who's sort of flashing once in a while and might have a good chance to make that last edge rusher position. Yeah, you know, it didn't take long last year for us to really get a feel for his instincts as a football player, playing the position. Um, <laughs> that was one of the Smurfs over the there. Place. Yeah. <laughs> that you guys love to write about. Um, yeah. Um, but the thing I, I think I've noticed the most, Sal, with Mike is the way he's transformed his body this offseason. 
he he just looks like he's put a lot of time into that, and and you and we've seen that he's reaped the dividends of that um, early part of training camp to this point. He spends a lot of time in Jerry's hip pocket just with um, trying to adjust to some of the habits that go with um, playing at a high level, and and uh, that's a good thing. John with uh, Dawson Knox and Jason Froome and Tyler Croft, is there any? Thought or fear that they might not be ready for the start of the season, just in terms of the, the timetable they're on. Right now. Yeah, you know, we'll just we'll just take it one day at a time right now. Um, you know, I just I'm anxious to get those guys back. And but that said, I'm happy. I was pleased, very pleased the other night with the guys that did play, what they what they've done, and not just the other night, but what they've done um, in the days leading up to it. So, um, you know, we've got to. Those are the guys that we have to evaluate, hard to evaluate the guys that aren't out there. And um, the best thing that they can do is control what they can control and, and, uh, and get healthy. Sean, what have, your, what have been your impressions of Tyree Jackson through the week plus here again? Yeah, you know, uh, I think he's done some really good things. He's got a great attitude, great approach. He, he um, He's a very coachable young man. Um, you know, it's great to have a guy from UB as well here, uh, both, both uh, Tyree and Cam, Cam Lewis in this case. So. Um, you know, it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a journey to be a to become a good quarterback in this league, and he's a young he's a young one. So, um, you know, every day is uh, two steps forward, one step back, but that's okay because we continue to focus on the process and, and make progress. And, and I think he's done that. Josh mentioned last week that he had conversation with Tyree about how to handle the limited reps and not trying to do too much with those limited opportunities. What sort of conversations? Have you had with Tyree to make sure he's not trying to hit a home run just because he's getting a handful of reps? Yeah, that's that is a challenge, right? Because you, if you only get a couple plays, you want to make the most of them, um, and that's true for every position. Really, is what one of the things we try to impress upon our team is make the most of the opportunities, control what you can control, and then um, part of making an impact and, and showing us your value is doing your job. And sometimes that may mean checking the ball down if that's the what the play calls for, the defense calls for it. And that's an important piece that, that our entire team has to continue to understand is uh, my role, even though I may not be the primary read as a receiver, um, my role is just as important as, as the role of the primary receiver. So um, it's just it comes back to doing your job and uh, being your 111th on this football team. John, you put uh, Josh through some challenging situations the other night. Um, after you watched the film, what did you see? Like to see, or did you, did you not like them? So. Yeah, um, you know, there's, there's obviously, there's always good plays and bad plays, and, and um, I liked his command of the huddle. Um, I liked his um, ability to move us down the field like we did at times. But I thought overall, uh, just as an overall, really team, uh, we left a lot of plays on the field, and um, so we go. That's why we go back to work and, and uh, get those things worked out best we can today, and continue to grow, continue to, uh, to build. As the uh, night went on, it got a little more physical. It seemed like was that kind of the uh, the edge of the energy you wanted to see from guys that they were feeling it in that atmosphere and environment. Yeah, I, I thought there was a number of guys that that I felt that showed up in the in the live portions of practice. Um, you know, the tight ends, as I mentioned, I felt some of the uh, bless you. I thought felt some of the some of the um, DBs in there as well. Um, and so um, that's what you want to feel. You want when you're down there, at least you want to be able to feel guys and feel their presence and feel them step up and and uh, it not be too big. And and so that's I would say you know some of the work we have to do yet as well is making sure we can slow the game down, in particular for some of these young players. Sean, having been on the defensive side when you were in Carolina, so you know, I'm, I'm not sure how much you watched monitor Cam Newton's development, but. It, it, or, or was focused on it, but when you when we look at when you start judging or seeing and evaluating Josh Allen entering his second year, are there milestones? Is there some comparisons that you can make looking back and what you're looking for and wanting to hit some hit whatever objective that you want? Yeah, you know those are good experience opportunities, really. Whether it's Cam in that case, or, or Donovan back in Philadelphia, or other quarterbacks that were on our roster as well. I think that's part of the learning process and developing myself as a coach, and not just a defensive coach uh, in this case. And um, and then going against quarterbacks that I know are hard to defend, and, and using that as as experience for myself and building what I want, what what I want in a quarterback. And 
and then in this case collectively, collectively what Brandon and I are looking for. So um, there are there are markers. Um, you know, at the end of the day, it gets back to earlier what I said about doing your job. You know, hey, if your job's to hand the ball off, then then you hand the ball off like the best quarterback in the league, and you carry out the fake and. And so no one on this team is more important than anybody else. I understand it's a quarterback driven league and, and results sometimes tend to follow that, right? And so, uh, but it's important that we're all doing our job and working to do our job at a high level. John, two more, please. How beneficial has it been to have a guy like Russell Bodine who's played as much as he has behind Mitch? Yeah, experience again. You know, I think when you, when you look at the, some of the successful teams around the league, there is a layer of a veteran veterans on those teams and, and there's no substitute for experience um, I don't care how much you prepare or how good you are experience is, uh, is real and so um, Russ in this case is a veteran player with a ton of experience and, and, and um, a ton of wisdom at the center position in particular built up so that's important for us he is yeah guys good all right thank you